Hello everyone. Um, in this video, I'm, I'll be talking about Jack Rothman's model of community organization. In the previous video, we had spoken about Murray Ross's model of community organization, wherein we had talked about the three different approaches that he has spoken about. The uh, general content approach, the specific content approach, and the process approach. In this particular video, we'll be discussing um, Jack Rothman's model, which he gave in the year 1968. And again, uh, the context is uh, of America, uh, but this model has been used by various countries. Now, uh, Jack Rothman um, introduced three models of community organization. They were locality development model, social planning model, and social action model. Uh, these three model constructs were revised later on in the year 2001, keeping into account the uh, changes uh, in the nature of communities and also the evolvement of and the social work profession so uh, the changes that he made were primarily that he changed uh, the name names instead of referring to three approaches as models he prefer referring to them as core modes of community intervention um, and also uh, as uh, uh, we had discussed in uh, murray ross's approaches that these are idle type approaches these are these models are idle types they do not exist in reality in their full blown form um, so you would will not find them exactly existing in reality these are sort of mental tools which help a community organizer to understand analyze and uh, uh, work in the, the community and describe the reality of the community. So um, as far as uh, Jack Rothman's model are concerned, we'll uh, discuss them one by one. The first one is uh, locality development. So when we say locality development, what do we mean by the term locality here? Locality here means a geographical uh, community. Uh, I hope you remember we discussed geographical uh, communities in um, one of our classes. So, um, geographical communities means place-based communities like a rural area, village, a town. So, locality development, um, one should not get confused with the name that, you know, it might mean that uh, we sort of bringing about some uh, beautiful infrastructure in the locality. It is not so. Locality development basically looks at bringing uh, the different groups of the community together uh, in order to bring about some uh, change in the community. Now, when we say uh, bringing the different groups together, um, we mean that uh, all the existing groups in the community, they have to um, come together, forgetting about their um, different interest. So, within the community, there can be a lot of groups existing who have uh, conflicting interest or who have tangential interest. So, um, as a community organizer, the role of the community organizer is to bring all these uh, groups having conflicted interests together um, in order to meet the main goal of the uh, community. Also, um, another important thing to understand here is that um, it is a community building endeavor. So we are trying to uh, uh, enhance the capacity of the co uh, community. We are empowering the community. And the main focus is on participation of the different groups, mutuality, mutual support, coordination, cooperation among the different groups of the community and the purpose is to make community autonomous so that it can um, uh, so that it can uh, give solutions to its own uh, problems itself it becomes autonomous and once the community become autonomous the social worker the community organizer uh, organizer steps back so the role of the community organizer or the social worker is of an enabler of a facilitator um, again, when we say that, you know, this, this model is very, uh, it has a people's orientation and we are looking at uh, the uh, various groups. Uh, again, there are a lot of, uh, although this uh, model is very popular, there are a lot of constraints to this model. The first very constraint is that a lot of critiques say that it's a very soft approach. Soft approach that we're talking about bringing in consensus and then looking at the community needs. You know, when in a community there are different groups with conflicting interests, it's very difficult to bring in consensus. And it's a very time consuming process in order to bring consensus among these conflicting groups. So it's time consuming, it's a very slow, uh, the change is very slow paced. Also another um, critique of this uh, model is that it's located in micro reality. And uh, it's uh, it doesn't take into account the macro changes that are happening. And when we only take into account the micro reality without taking into consideration the macro changes which might be impinging upon the macro realities, the change that 
uh, this sort of model brings about is not a long lasting change it's not a sustainable change uh, so um, another uh, important critique of this uh, particular model is that um, in in uh, in a context of neoliberal world or a globalized world where the concept of um, geographical community itself is uh, diminishing you know people are uh, people are moving uh, constantly moving and the concept of geographical communities the significance of geographical communities is decreasing so uh, uh, again in this uh, type of situation the efficacy of this model is sort of challenged coming to the second model of rothman which is the social planning model or social plan uh, social policy mode of community intervention now this particular model it is technical in nature uh, now what do i mean by technical it, it means that it requires certain technical expertise it requires uh, the um, expertise of some experts for example so if i have to give example of your uh, field setting yeah, in uh, like in Mirpur village, there is a lot of uh, there is a problem of uh, water supply. Now this problem is something which requires a specific skill set, right? Uh, you you need uh, the help of some experts in order to solve this problem. It cannot be done by lay person because it requires a lot of data to be collected, a, a lot of quantitative data to be collected, and um, how the water supply has to be built up. All that requires technical expertise. Uh, so, uh, in, in such type of uh, problems, we uh, tend to use uh, uh, social planning and policy uh, mode of community intervention or social planning and policy model. Now, uh, when we say that, uh, you know, the, the uh, focus here is not on uh, people's participation, unlike the uh, previous model, which is very people's oriented. This one is not uh, people's oriented. You require the services on, of an expert planner. Mm, who does all the analysis, generates data, and prepares blueprint, and it sort of becomes very uh, uh, time consuming and cost. Uh, there, there's a lot of cost involved in this because uh, then you, for such technical things, you need to sometimes do stakeholder analysis, SWOT analysis, and things like that. So, uh, for example, mm, if I have to give another example, um, uh, you know, there is this. Uh, in, in some some Himalayan community, people want to build earthquake resistant uh, houses because that particular community is very earthquake prone. That area, geographical, that uh, place is very earthquake prone. So for that, for in order to build those earthquake resistant uh, houses, an expert's uh, advice is required. Expert's work is required. It cannot be done by lay people. Uh, so uh, the critique of this uh, particular model is that it's a very expensive process and um, in a de developing country like India where the government spending on social sector is decreasing day by day, how viable is um, this particular model or community mode of intervention? Uh, so uh, by far we've looked at two, one is locality development model of Jock, uh, J Jack Rothman wherein he talks about which is peoples oriented uh, wherein he says that uh, you know the whole focus is on bringing the different conflictual interests together uh, and the second one is uh, social planning and policy wherein there is a requirement of some expert, some technical expertise are required. The third one is social action model. So in social action model, the focus is on action. In this particular model, it, it it's built on the presumption that in a particular community, there is a disadvantaged group that exists. So there is a disempowered or a disadvantaged group which doesn't have any power. That particular group exists in that community. And uh, this uh, particular model um, aims to uh, get access to power and opportunities and decision making capacity for this particular disadvantaged group. Now when we say that you know in a particular community uh, a disadvantaged group exists that means that you know the, all the power so these are powerless people and whoever has the power the group that has the power would not want to give away the power that easily right. So uh, when uh, we talk about social action model we are we also um, 
and talk about uh, the use of uh, disruptive techniques of community organization like uh, uh, staging dharnas or uh, uh, having strikes or demonstrations um, this particular model is used very effectively by a lot of uh, environmental groups feminist groups um, the people who work in the area of uh, hiv and uh, uh, civil rights activists they have been using this uh, particular model a lot now uh, we are saying that uh, this pop this uh, particular model is not so popular with the human services professionals that's because the human service professional thinks that think that they do not have the uh, particular skills uh, skill set uh, which is required to go against the power structure so you have to challenge the existing power structure in order to get uh, power for this disadvantaged group However, it, in the contemporary times, it has been used extensively, as I mentioned, by a lot of environmental groups, a lot of uh, these civil rights activists and feminist groups. So these are the three uh, different uh, models or uh, modes of intervention given by Jack Rothman. Just to sum up very quickly, the first one is locality development. And all these were given in the year to, uh, 1968. Uh, in the context of American communities. Um, however, they've been used in uh, uh, different uh, contexts. Uh, so the first one is locality development, where the focus is on people's participation, bringing in uh, the different groups together. And uh, uh, the main aim is to empower the community so that they can become autonomous. The second one is social planning policy um, uh, model, uh, wherein the whole uh, focus is on um, uh, the whole focus is on um, getting the skills of an expert uh, in order to uh, solve a particular problem which requires an expert's advice or expert's uh, uh, technical uh, skills. The third one is social action wherein we're talking about uh, which pre presumes that in our community uh, there is a disadvantaged group that exists and we're talking about getting um, access to access of power uh, to them of decision making capacity and we're also talking about uh, when we say power for them we are saying that we'll be going against the existing power structures and so there is a lot of use of the confrontational techniques which we have studied uh, like staging dharnas and strikes and demonstrations in order to get power for these um, groups and uh, this one is used uh, a lot by the different groups as, as I've stated before. So now uh, in the third part hopefully I'll be talking about H.Y. Siddiqui's models which are the indigenous models um, which he, ha he has uh, developed while working in the Indian communities. So thank you for now.